A Russian warship on Sunday fired warning shots at a cargo ship in southwestern Black Sea. And this is the first time that Russia has fired on merchant shipping beyond Ukraine since exiting the landmark UN brokered grain deal. Now to talk more on this, we are now being joined by Ben Aris, who is the founder and editor-in-chief of BNE in Telenews. Mr. Aris has been covering Russia since 1993 with stints in the Baltics and Central Asia. Thank you so much for joining us on We're On, Mr. Aris. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Right. Ms. Aris, now the Russian officials used automatic weapons to haul the vessel which was en route at the Ukrainian port of Izmail. And this is the first time that Russia has fired on a merchant uh, warship beyond Ukraine. How concerning is this at the moment? Well, it's yet another step in this creeping escalation that we have going on in the, uh, in the war in Ukraine in so much as the fighting for most of the last year and a half has been entirely contained within Ukraine's borders. And in the last months, we've seen it increasingly leave those borders and start affecting countries and territory around. You know, there's been strikes inside Russia. There's now regular drone strikes on Moscow. And the Ukrainians themselves, they launched a uh, naval drone and attacked the Russian port of Novorossiysk which is its main export route out of the country to the south. I mean, that's a key oil terminal, but also grain and other products go out through that. It's the most active and biggest port Russia has. So now we've seen this naval blockade that's been in the Black Sea preventing Ukraine from exporting its grain. Um, and the grain deal that was thrashed out last summer, um, brokered by Turkey and the UN, has, been, uh, has collapsed. Uh, the Russians have withdrawn from it. And that means, in effect, that there's an embargo, a naval blockade uh, on Ukraine's ports. And what we've just seen at the weekend is the first incident where that blockade is being enforced. Um, the merchant ship, which seems to have been carrying or going to pick up grain, uh, it was a dry cargo ship, um, refused to stop when it was challenged by the right. Russian Coast Guard. So they fired across the bows and forced it to stop and inspected it. And we haven't seen that happen yet. First Absolutely, time, Mr. Uh, Aris. Just to add to that, the latest incident also comes after Moscow clearly said that it considers all ships headed to Ukrainian waters as potential carriers of weapon. And Mr. Aris, you've also been covering Russia since 1993. Talk to us about if this is Moscow's new tactics going forward in the Ukraine-Russia war. Yeah, I mean, what's behind this is is an argument over sanctions in so much as that Moscow has been insisting that um, sanctions on it be lifted or eased at least in order to support its own exports, specifically um, the agricultural sanctions that Russia is suffering from. And while grain itself is not sanctioned, the effect of the general sanctions, particularly the financial sanctions, have made it very difficult for Russia to export its grain and get paid. Um, it's pointing to the Agricultural Bank, which has been sanctioned, its main bank for agriculture, but also was the facilitator in trade. And that bank can't accept payments. Therefore, you can't export de facto Russian grain because you can't get paid. And what the, what the Kremlin is doing is applying pressure here in order to try and force the West to concede and lift sanctions, specifically on the Agricultural Bank. There, there are other things in the deal as well, but this is one of the key points. And they're hoping by enforcing this uh, blockade and now shaking everybody up by shooting yeah. um, that the, the West, the EU in particular, will agree to ease some of these sanctions in order to facilitate, facilitate the restart of Ukrainian grain exports. Right. And Ms. Harris, what is the way forward now? There are concerns among the ship owners about the potential dangers of getting ensnared in the Black Sea. Yeah, it's become dangerous to, to go. I mean, Zelensky's government has said that they're going to provide escorts and open some sort of corridor for shipping um, where they don't have the Russian guarantee that they'll interfere, interfere militarily. Uh, and we've just seen Russia very clearly say, well, that's not going to work because if you try and send a ship to the ports without our OK, we're going to stop it and fire on it. I mean, again, the ship wasn't damaged. It arrived in the port, so, I mean, maybe it's going to turn around and come out. But everyone's now a great deal more nervous. Um, insurance rates will go up if insurers will insure ships at all in that situation. There's a question mark over there. And without the insurance, then the merchant fleet won't go to Ukraine. They have to have insurance.
this is clearly sent jitters through global commodity and oil and shipping markets. But also let's talk about how Russia is also attacking civilians in the area of Kherson. Is this, is this a retaliation to Ukraine's alleged attack on the Crimea bridge? Well, indeed. I mean, again, it's more creeping escalation that the tensions continue to rise and that you have a stalemate, it seems now. The Ukrainian counteroffensive is not making any progress. And there were big hopes that there would be a spectacular breakthrough. And that's not happening. And so what's left? Um, they end up bludgeoning each other with clubs and um, rocket attacks on both sides. As I mentioned, there's been some drone attacks on Moscow. That's a civilian population designed to shake up the Russians to take the war to them at their doorstep and uh, Russia's retaliating and hitting urban targets in Ukraine, Kherson, the poor citizens who live there have been under constant bombardment and the civilian casualties continue to creep up with apartment blocks being held. There was a blood transfusion uh, facility that got hit at the weekend and an eight-year-old boy was killed with a rocket attack. Right. And it's just tragic. Um, but unfortunately, that's war. And, and again, if there's no like rapid progress, then you end up in this grinding war of attrition. And who suffers from that? The civilians. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Aris, for joining us on Beyond and sharing your insights with us on this continuous coverage of our Ukraine-Russia war.